Here it is. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. testing centers for coronavirus and making primary care physicians more available in neighborhoods they aren't already in. But they also said a much deeper problem needs to be addressed, the legacy of racism. If we did a better job in eliminating racism and providing equal opportunity, we wouldn't be having a conversation about the unique and particularly targeted, in targeted impacts of this particular virus. We'd be talking about it in more global terms. Anything short of actually dismantling the policies and practices and institutions that have been set up that disproportionately impact communities of color, we won't make real progress. It will just be a temporary fix, and it won't be sustainable. In Washington, Taylor Popolars, Spectrum News. Representatives Fudge and Beatty and fellow Ohio Democrats Marcy Kaptur and Senator Sherrod Brown have all signed on to legislation that would require the Department of Health and Human Services to collect and report racial data on the coronavirus. But Cleveland Clinic sending more nurses to the front lines in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Nurses from Cleveland Clinic's Avon Hospital received a hero send-off as 13 of them are heading to Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit to join healthcare workers combating the coronavirus. The nurses, all of whom volunteered, will be gone for a month. There's definitely nerves, but um, one of my best friends, her name's Brittany, she's my college roommate, and she's also a nurse back in Massachusetts, where I'm from, and she's just been telling me about how incredibly difficult and trying and exhausting. So when the clinic approached us with this opportunity to help other nurses in a similar situation to her, I just jumped at it. We're so proud of our fellow caregivers and as part of the Cleveland Clinic Health System to be able to send them off here on their way to Michigan. The Cleveland Clinic already has 25 nurses in New York, helping at New York Presbyterian Hospital for a few weeks. a bit of an interesting Wednesday. Some rain showers at times, snowflakes at other times, uh, particularly up in northeastern Ohio, east of Cleveland, where we're still seeing a few bands of snow showers. Gradually, that will change over to rain. We get a little bit of a lull in the morning tomorrow, and then passing showers. Kind of a gloomy Thursday expected. Here it is. Break Friday. The news about the, the coronavirus. Fortunately, that rain gets in here. That's Saturday right. Afternoon, the Sunday news about well. the coronavirus. Cool as well. You know, it's been a huge difference in our temperatures from northeast to southwest. They almost hit 70. Parts of southwestern Ohio did hit 70. We were stuck in the 40s for most of us. Some of you have been hovering in the upper 30s with snowflakes. Now, this frontal boundary is going to gradually shift north, and we'll get some warmer air in here tomorrow. The problem is with that warmer air is going to come the cloud cover and some moisture as this storm system pulls out of the central plains and moves toward the Tennessee Valley. Let's talk about it. We'll go hour by hour with future casts. Here's late tonight. There finally goes the snow and the rain showers. They get a little morning sun tomorrow before the clouds thicken back up by midday. Showers push in toward Mansfield, Worcester, Canton, and Carrollton toward noon, and then shift northward as we head into the afternoon. Now, Futurecast really wants to keep areas along and north of the turnpike dry, with most of the rain south. I think there'll be some showers in here, but the steadiest rain, the heaviest rain, will be the farther south to go. Temperatures do moderate. We'll be in the 50s as opposed to the 30s. Uh, but then the winds are out of the north off the lake Friday morning, so it will be kind of cool, uh, despite the fact that we clear out at least briefly on Friday. Unfortunately, that onshore flow, it keeps the lake shore quite chilly for Friday afternoon. Rainfall amounts, again, mostly light here over the next uh, 48 hours, generally under a quarter of an inch in most spots. As you head down farther to the south, that's where the bulk of the rain will fall with storm number one. We have storm number two. That comes in this weekend, which we'll talk about on the ones in about 10 minutes. Here's your sky cast in the morning, kind of gloomy. Rain showers will be around, starting around midday. Again, the farther south you go, the heavier the rain will be. Not uh, too heavy here across northeastern Ohio. Temperatures do moderate, so we get back into the 50s. 
but the winds changing out of the south for a while before coming back out of the north late in the day. The temperature trend does look up as we head into the weekend, at least for a little bit. More on that on the ones in minutes. New timeline, new fears, and new plans to reopen. Just ahead, we're going to look at new evidence out west that shows a big change in the timeline of COVID-19 infections in the U.S. But before we head to the break, here are some of the people doing their part to stay home and stay safe, all part of the governor's initiative in this Together Ohio. We've always been Ohio strong. And now we need that strength more than ever. It's up to all of us to stay home, stay positive, and stay healthy. And even though right now we can't gather together, in Ohio, we will always stand together. start to change your future. Go online with Start State College and start a fast finishing certificate or a two-year degree for an in-demand career. Even if you think online learning isn't for you, we're here to help you through. If you qualify for financial aid, you may even be able to do it for free. Visit starkstate.edu slash online. That's starkstate.edu slash online. Your participation in the 2020 Census determines how to allocate billions of dollars of federal funding. Your answers and personal information are strictly confidential. They help fund schools and education, accessibility, health care and first responders, affordable housing, and more. Complete the Census in multiple languages, online, by mail, or on the phone. Go to 2020census.gov for information brought to you by these organizations. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24 7. Plus, in depth shows and exclusives focused Here on. Here it is the news about the coronavirus. That's right, the news about the coronavirus. Weather and the sky has always fascinated me, and I live with what I do. I come home, look at the weather forecast, and it's really a part of my life. It's not just a job, it is my passion. I'm Chief Meteorologist here, Rick Dalewell. We have a very experienced weather team, and we know what's important to Ohioans as they make their plans every day, because we are part of the community. I'm Eric Elwell, Chief Meteorologist, Spectrum News 1. New evidence out of California indicates that the coronavirus took American lives weeks before the first known U.S. case. The news comes as the CDC says a new resurgence later this year could be even more vicious. Whitney Wild brings us the latest from Washington. A startling revelation. Autopsies from deaths in Santa Clara County, California, show two people died from coronavirus in early February, three weeks before the first known U.S. death. Even more surprising, neither person had been Here it is. Abroad. The news about the coronavirus. As early as That's right. Not earlier than that. The news about the coronavirus. Timeline, doctors on the White House task force are sounding the alarm about the risks if a resurgence of the virus collides with flu season later this year. It's certainly a possibility, um, but that's why we have built into the plan the surveillance mechanisms to look for the respiratory illnesses and then to do the appropriate testing at that time. An infection model driving White House guidance now shows 12 states may have to wait until June or later to reopen, including South Carolina and Georgia, where officials plan to restart the economy by Friday. In some areas, plans for easing restrictions are creating rifts between state and local leaders. We know that Texans really want to get back to work. 
I and my team have been working swiftly on, on a program to get Texas back to work. You have to be very careful if you open up too soon. You'll undo all the sacrifices that people make. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. The pandemic has been tough on everyone, but it has also brought out the best in the people of Ohio. Up next, we're going to introduce you to a company that's reaching out to help other businesses during this difficult time. Our latest One Ohio story is next. Eric. Tonight, we're keeping an eye on two storms headed this way. The first one gets in here during the day Thursday. The second one will likely spoil some weekend plans if you had some plans to head outside. We're tracking the rain and talking about how much that's on the one straight ahead. Hey. Hi. How are you? Evening. Ooh. So, what's the plan? You jump in there, the drought ends, and then the crops grow. Everyone's happy. Right. Okay. Uh, what if... Goodness. that would get the water from the river down to the fields, like with tubes or something. A gravity-driven water distribution network. Yes! Huh? You got it here? Oh. Oh. Well, everybody walked all the way up. So... Go on, get on with it! In you go. Yeah, no, you're right. I like him. You like everyone. Well, I'm a people person. Eventually, somebody realizes there's a better way to do things. Like a mobile service that's the most reliable, with the fastest overall speeds, and now with 5G. It's a better way to mobile. It's Spectrum Mobile. You know, people, we don't just know about the weather, we know about Ohio. You never have to wait for your forecast with your Weather on the Ones. Weather on the Ones, every 10 minutes, exclusively on Spectrum. Spectrum News One, a new kind of news channel dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24 7. Plus, in depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. And I don't think Michigan can become the Michigan of old. We're probably the first professional sports team in the world that was built by the fans. We're the biggest ice cream shipper in the nation, setting the standard for American ice cream. I get to live my dream. I mean, what more could I ask for? Conversations, Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Chief Meteorologist Eric Elwell with your weather on the ones. I'm going to look at your extended forecast. A reminder, though, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We post all kinds of background weather information for you there on my Facebook page. Also, you can email us, OhioWeather at Charter.com. Let's talk pollen real quick before we get into the seven day. The forecast for the pollen, not much change. So if you haven't been suffering too much, you're likely going to be okay. If you have been dealing with it, you're likely going to continue to deal with the uh, itchy eyes and maybe some sneezing here. Maybe it'll be more of a drop off with a better shot of rain coming up for the weekend. Let's talk about the timing of the rain. We've had to deal with a few showers here late tonight, even some snow showers and spots. We warm up though during the night through the morning, and so we'll see mainly rain for us for Thursday. Heaviest rain staying just to the south of northeastern Ohio. That's where we're going to pick up an inch, maybe an inch and a half of rain through Thursday. We get a little lull with perhaps some sunshine for Friday briefly. And then the next system comes in late Saturday. I think we get Saturday morning in dry, but unfortunately this system is going to get hung up in the area into Sunday, so we're going to have to deal with some rain on Sunday as well. Bulk of the rain over the, the two storms, the one Thursday and the one over the weekend, you can see parts of southern Ohio, one to three inches, but we could get close to an inch, even up to the turnpike. That would be mainly with the weekend storm system. As far as times to get outside, Looking a little gloomy. If you want to do it, I would do it early. Just grab the jacket. It's going to be a little cool. 
We'll be back into the upper 50s, so a milder afternoon, but you'll leave the umbrella for a walk. Friday's going to be the pick day, although cooler, 52. Back uh, a little warmer Saturday. Rain comes in late, make it some morning sunshine there. Kind of gloomy and wet, dreary Sunday, chilly, 49. Monday back to 52. Temperatures bounce around into next week. More rain, of course, just in time to warm up as we head toward the middle of next week. Now a live look at radar. We're seeing people, organizations, and businesses all across the state step up to help one another, and we're calling it One Ohio. And one example is this Cleveland-based printing company that is using its resources and equipment to help Northeast Ohio restaurants. Our Carlin Wells has more on what they're doing to give back to their community. Each day, thousands of documents from books to manuals to business cards are printed and packaged at Northern Ohio Printing. Recently, menus are the majority of what's being printed, and Northern Ohio Printing President Gary Shemaleski is proud to say the company is doing so at no cost for restaurants affected by COVID-19. That's kind of where my heartbeat is for those people, because talking to a lot of them, they're down to just, you know, they're down to like one quarter of their staff, and it's just, uh, it, it really... Uh, day by day just, just kind of getting them by one day at a time and it's uh, been really hard to hear their stories. Chimileski says local restaurants make up a very large part of the company's clientele and for those that remain open advertising is essential. They can put a care out menu or a coupon for people to come back and you know come back maybe later in the week or tell a friend or family member hey we, we got carry out at this restaurant and uh, we have their menu here and like we want to support them. Finance Director of Truman's 216, Lauren Peppel, says the restaurant took advantage of the offer immediately. It really shows that, you know, not only Gary and his and Northern Ohio Printing, but this community, Cleveland, is really coming together and supporting each other. And that's important now, and that's important in the future. Northern Ohio Printing is offering 1,000 menus, flyers, or coupon sheets per restaurant location. While the state is under stay-at-home orders, Truman's 216 is providing 100 meals to local first responders per day. And they had free appetizer coupons made, which they give out as they deliver meals. Once we open, we want to continue to show our appreciation to the people who protect and serve us in many ways. Um, so that's great. So every time we go out into the community, whether um, it's a hospital at the Cleveland Clinic or University Hospital Sidemen or the, the fire department in Shaker or police station in Cleveland, they're getting these coupons. Um, we're getting the message out that when we're open, we want them to be the first ones in. Uh, to show our thanks. Shemaleski says the 26-year-old Cleveland company wants to do its part, helping to bring in customers and some hope to restaurants hard hit by COVID-19. I love Cleveland and I, uh, I'll do anything to help our community. And uh, what we want to do is bring bring them some hope. And that's really what all of us want in a time of a crisis. Reporting in Cleveland, Carlin Wells, Spectrum News. Northern Ohio Printing's website even offers a design guide tool to assist restaurant owners in designing and formatting their menu, flyer, or coupon sheet. We are One Ohio, so use that hashtag, One Ohio, with your videos, images, or notes in your social media post, and we could share them right here on Spectrum News One. The news continues all day long right here on Spectrum News One. We've got the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic, along with your forecast coming up at the bottom of the hour. But first, it's time for Ohio Voices. Working in outreach, recruitment, working with families and people and adults in the Central Ohio community, it's just really beautiful to see how much generosity is out there and with so much hatred and trauma in the world, it just really fills me up every day to see people who want to give back and just have nothing to get in return. That's how I've been raised, is just to see the good in everything. That's my mother, and she literally sees the good in everybody, everything, every bad thing.
everything that's happened to her. She's been through breast cancer twice, and just going through that with her is just an amazing thing to see how strong she is. It's just like you're going to enjoy life, and you're going to be as positive as you can to everyone that you meet because you just don't know what people are going through. So I try to keep that mentality. Owning your own business means early mornings and late nights. It takes determination and courage to turn an idea into something real. Businesses like yours keep communities thriving. Advertising should be the easy part. The Spectrum Reach ad portal makes advertising your business easier and more affordable than ever. Create a commercial and TV schedule right from your computer whenever it's convenient for you. Spectrum Reach. Never stop reaching. At Fred Larson Store, we're here for first responders and essential people. Shop online over 1,500 vehicles. Come here where we track the COVID-19 best safety practices, or bring the car to your driveway. Zero percent financing, make no payments for six months. us stronger and Ford is built to lend a hand especially now with six month payment relief buy a new Ford we'll defer three payments and make three payments for peace of mind up to six months shop at Ford.com or contact your Ford dealer to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options you have a lot to take care of let us help take care of you Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Joining us here on Spectrum News 1, I'm Curtis Jackson. Let's get things started with the very latest on the pandemic. The number of food stamp applications in Ohio has nearly tripled from this time a year ago. The Department of Job and Family Services says there were nearly 30,000 SNAP applications last week, compared to just over 10,000 during the same week last year. Museums across the state are about to get some financial help. Ohio Humanities says it is providing three quarters of a million dollars in emergency federal relief grants to historical societies, museums, and other cultural organizations affected by the virus. And while the Dayton Air Show won't happen this summer, the event being scheduled for the last weekend in June as it has been canceled, but the president says the Air Force Thunderbirds and Navy Blue Angels will perform in cities throughout the country. We're going to have more on how our communities are reacting to the pandemic in just a few moments. But first, let's get an updated check of your weather on the ones forecast. Clouds will be pushing in through the night. Some parts of Ohio getting in on a little bit of rain. The rest of us will see the rain as we head into the day Thursday. Even some rumbles of thunder across southern Ohio. Here's what we're watching, a storm system pushing up from the south. That heads our way tomorrow, but there's been a few showers and even some snowflakes up in northeastern Ohio during the early part of the night. Now, the rain will arrive in the morning, Cincinnati to Portsmouth and push into central Ohio midday, and then continue to spread northward, although the bulk of the heavier rain and even the chance for some thunder will be across the southern half of the state. So get the umbrella ready for Thursday. Rain expected pretty much statewide. Temperatures will, will be a pretty big range here with lower to middle 50s expected in the north. Cleveland 58, 56, Columbus up to 61. Eastern Ohio gets a little bit warmer as that'll be where the rain arrives last. Temperatures in the low 60s in Finley, upper 50s in Athens, mid 50s in Portsmouth. We are tracking more rain on the way for the weekend. A lot to talk about in your forecast. 
That's on the ones in minutes. In Wednesday's press briefing at the White House, President Trump says that governors have the final say on when to reopen, but that he does think that Georgia is moving too fast when it comes to rolling back coronavirus-related restrictions. The state has allowed some businesses to reopen at the end of the week, including hair salons, tattoo shops, and gyms. And Wednesday, CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield walked back comments he made about a possible second wave of coronavirus in the fall. Redfield told the Washington Post that having both the flu and coronavirus in circulation would seriously strain the health care system. Now, he says, while it would be more difficult and complicated, that doesn't mean it would be worse. This spring that we just went through, February, we had a benefit of having the flu season ended. So we could use all our flu surveillance systems to say, whoops, this is coronavirus, we need to focus. Next fall and, and, and winter, we are gonna have two viruses circulating. Redfield says it will be very important for Americans to get the flu shot to lower the number of flu cases. Seniors on Social Security and veterans receiving VA payments qualify for coronavirus relief checks. That's according to the AARP. They say relief checks will be sent automatically to seniors and veterans who did not file tax returns in 2018 or 2019. And as part of the CARES Act, retirees are also not required to take any minimum income distribution. That's money that seniors withdraw from tax deferred accounts like an IRA or a traditional 401k account. Those withdrawals are taxed. It's really important that when the market is down, we don't want people to have to eat a big loss. The law requires that um, people are allowed to keep their money in for uh, at least an extra year to hopefully recover their, uh, their, their savings. And you can visit aarp.org slash coronavirus for resources on relief payment. Meyer is stepping up during this economic crisis to help their workers and support local restaurants. The supermarket chain, which has several Ohio locations, is buying meals for its associates. Meyer's corporate leaders are creating a new initiative called Buy Local. It allows their store managers to work with restaurants in their areas to buy meals for Meyer's employees. One store outside of Cincinnati has already purchased pizza for its people after managers realized they have 16 workers with families in need. Meyer is based in Grand Rapids, Michigan and operates 248 stores. The initiative is expected to last several weeks. In partnership with Cleveland.com, this is Capital Letter. The largest known coronavirus hotspot in the country isn't in New York or California or Michigan. It's in a prison in Marion, Ohio. Over 80% of the population in Marion Correctional have tested positive for the coronavirus. Cleveland.com reporter Jeremy Pelzer with more on what's behind this alarming outbreak and what's being done to stop it. Jeremy, good to see you. Likewise. Over 2,000 inmates have tested positive for the virus. That's 16% of the total number of cases in the state. How did this situation in Marion get so bad? Well, first, prisons by their very nature are vulnerable to outbreaks as you have a large number of people confined to close quarters, limited access to health care. Another big reason is they've been doing a lot of testing. State officials are working to test every inmate the more tests you do, the more positive results you'll get. Uh, but inmates have also told me other reasons. Uh, when they were tested, it took several days for them to get test results back. And in the meantime, they were just sent back to their cells where they could possibly infect other people. And they also talk about things like uh, limited access to cleaning supplies. What has the state done to mitigate this spread? Well, as I said, they have been testing everyone, which is no small undertaking. Uh, and the inmates found not to have the virus in Marion apparently have been sent to the prison's gymnasium. But one inmate told me that at night, at least, about 200 inmates there only have access to a single toilet, which is not great. Uh, when you're looking at the conditions there,